If you missed the Harry Potter series, you're gonna love this collection of hilarious bloopers and behind-the-scenes moments that will immerse you into the magical Hogwarts atmosphere right now. And it's not like a spell or something, it's actually like a physical hit. There's something very satisfying about that. Are you ready? Then let the magic begin at Awesome Movies! Who loves a know-it-all? Asks a person who doesn't know Miss Granger. She's rock and roll, she's girl power, she's out there doing everything. Yes, Hermione represents girl power and became a role model for young girls. This young lady always knew the right answer to everything. She was funny and likable, and she knew how to punch someone in the face. <laughs> oh, oh. But did you know that there's a funny story behind this scene? When Emma Watson and Tom Felton talked about how to film it, Tom offered to rehearse the punch, just to make sure that it looked believable. When I said slap me, it was like, movie slap. But apparently, Emma misunderstood her colleague. She just went, and just smacked me right across the face. Poor Tom didn't expect it at all, and didn't know what to do or what to say. And I was just like, yeah, that was, that was really good, that was, that was great. And Emma, well, she was just pure innocence. I feel really bad. I'm not really sure what I was thinking. <laughs> but Tom wasn't the only guy Emma got to hit on the set of Harry Potter. The other one was... Dan Radcliffe himself. Remember the scene where Harry said that he was the chosen one and Hermione slapped him with a folded parchment? But I am the chosen one. Okay, sorry. Um... Turns out, she did it too hard in one of the takes. So yeah, our dear Emma can get violent at times. But we still love her and think that she's just adorable. I'm dying. I can't, I can't even concentrate on what you're saying. And it's also pretty clear that she had a lot of fun with her co-stars on the set of Harry Potter. I mean, they were a superb cast, so we wouldn't expect anything less, right? None of us quite have any idea what's going on. And probably because there were so many kids on the set, there was a lot of laughing and giggling, too. So to keep things relatively serious, the crew came up with a system where a red card was given to an actor who'd burst out laughing on the set. One of the lead actors received a lot of these red cards, but we'll get back to that later. Emma, in her turn, managed to keep a straight face most of the time. And yet, there were still moments where she couldn't stop laughing. Red card, Emma Watson. <laughs> and even in the scene where she had to protect herself from deadly snakes, she just couldn't remain serious. I mean, would you be able to keep a straight face with all the ridiculousness happening on the set of the wizardly tale? Still, no matter how many red cards Emma received during her years on Harry Potter, we all know that she's a brilliant actress and a relatable young lady. Once, she was asked who she'd want to be like, and her answer was... All of us! I'd be Jennifer Aniston. Because <laughs> I could see what if Brad Pitt was really that good-looking place. We get you, Emma. But let's keep going and proceed to Watson's colleague, Rupert Grint. He and Emma were friends ever since they met on the set of the first film. After so many years of working together, they became like brother and sister. And when they had to kiss at the end of Deathly Hollows Part 2, things got really awkward. Do it. <laughs> there was no way they could use the first take, or the second. <laughs> and it was weird for both Rupert and Emma because they felt like they were kissing a sibling. But the film director, David Yates, knew how to make them do the scene correctly. He told both of them to forget that they're friends in real life and become their characters. So, um, she really went for it. Which to Rupert's surprise. So yeah, they did it, and the kiss turned out perfect on the screen. But kissing Emma wasn't the only time Rupert laughed on the set of Harry Potter. My goodness, you can't even imagine just how far it was from being the only time. In fact, Rupert laughed so much while shooting his scenes that sometimes it even annoyed the crew and his co-stars. The phrase they'd say the most often on the set was, Rupert, don't smile. Rupert, stop smiling. No, don't smile. Rupert, don't smile. Rupert, you shouldn't be laughing at the end. Mm. But he just couldn't help it, even when he grew up. And even in the most serious scenes. <laughs> you just shut your mouth. <laughs> So yeah, this guy got a lot of red cards. Rupert would giggle so often on the set that Alan Rickman, who played the intimidating Professor Snape, even gave him a piece of advice. He recommended that Rupert relax his face and not think about anything. <laughs> Didn't really work, to be honest. <laughs> Speaking of Rickman, he shared a bit of a laugh with Rupert and his younger co-stars at least once. It happened when Rupert drew a doodle of Alan in the role of Professor Snape. And at some point, Rupert realized something frightening. As I was drawing it, Alan Rickman was standing right behind me, and I was so scared. 
poor Rupert thought he was in big trouble. The picture wasn't nice either. But it turns out that Alan Rickman was no Severus Snape, and he even happened to like the sketch. I've made him sign it, and I have it in my possession. <laughs> and I'm very fond of it. Too bad neither of the actors ever showed the doodle to the fans. But here's a fun fact about Rupert Grint. He loves drawing cartoons so much that he even said that he'd like to find himself inside a cartoon. I'd like to be, um... A cartoon character. I think that'd be really cool. Not that it's possible to become a cartoon character, but Rupert can voice an animated hero, or even draw a cartoon himself. Let's hope that we'll see him doing it someday. But the kids weren't the only ones having fun on the set of Harry Potter. The adult actors also had their share of laughs. We already know that the late Alan Rickman had a great sense of humor, but did you also know that he liked to prank his younger co-stars? Once, on the set of The Prisoner of Azkaban, Rickman and Michael Gambon, who played Professor Dumbledore, decided to play a practical joke on Daniel Radcliffe. Remember the scene where all the students have to sleep in the Great Hall? Professor Snape and Dumbledore were walking among them, talking about the very serious incidents happening in the school at the time. Or at least, that's what we saw in the movie. Because behind the scenes, everything was not that serious. It's completely our own world. And we like to we like to swim. Yes, your ears weren't playing tricks on you, and you did hear farting sounds. It turns out that Rickman and Gammon secretly put a farting machine inside Daniel's sleeping bag, and Gammon was pressing the button as he said his lines. <laughs> It's incredible how happy he was about playing this prank. And Alan Rickman, he was just precious during the whole thing, and it made us recall how much we miss him, and how much we loved him as Severus Snape. Moving on to one of the most loved characters in the series, Rubius Hagrid! Just like everyone else, Robbie Coltrane, the actor behind The Gentle Giant, had a lot of fun, and he also screwed up quite a few takes. Was that thousand? Well, hey! Do I smell champagne? I write. I'm pretty sure that the thousand take came out perfectly. <laughs> Isn't Robbie just as sweet as Hagrid? But of course, not all the adult characters were a pleasure to watch. One of them proved to be even more evil and wicked than the Dark Lord himself. As you might have guessed, I'm talking about Dolores Umbridge. Her incisive smile and her pink-colored room with pictures of cats on the walls were the creepiest things in the whole series. Interestingly, it wasn't hard to find an actress for her character. It's described as very ugly and toad-like, and I love people say, oh, you'd be great for that part. Yeah, it looks like Imelda Staunton wasn't too pleased to know that she was perfect for playing the toad-like and ugly umbrage. And yet, she certainly didn't regret agreeing to the parts, and she also had her own funny behind-the-scenes moments in the series. Blah, 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 disloyalty. Oh. It's just like Dumbledore once said, even in the darkest of times, one should remember to turn on the light and have a good laugh. Disloyalty. Yes. <laughs> Isn't McGonagall just the sweetest here? And I know who wasn't the sweetest in the series, Bellatrix Lestrange, especially when she killed Sirius in the Order of the Phoenix. But this dreadful scene didn't look that horrible on the set. To be lost. Why on earth were they practicing a Hamlet monologue? Anyway, Helena Bonham Carter enjoyed portraying Bella. At the premiere of The Deathly Hollows Part 1, the actress said that there could be no better job than being paid lots of money for dressing up as a witch and behaving really badly. <laughs> she was perfect in this role, wasn't she? Wait, did we make you think that the lead actor never had any bloopers or funny moments on set, and everything was always just perfect with him? I'm an angel. I'm an angel. Well, Daniel, you might look like an angel, but we definitely know that you aren't one. Did you know that Radcliffe needed as many as 80 wands and 160 pairs of glasses throughout the series? We have no idea about the glasses, but he broke dozens of wands, mostly because he used them as drumsticks. Luckily for the entire cast and crew, the props department knew about this habit of his, and they always had a new wand for Harry at the ready, in case Dan broke another one. Too bad they couldn't just use the Reparo charm. Apart from breaking his wands and glasses, Dan had to do quite a lot of weird but exciting stuff on the set of Harry Potter. One of them was flying all over the room. Then he had to learn how to dance for the Yule Ball.
But due to the heavy filming schedule, he didn't have a chance to learn, so they had to film Harry from the waist up and avoid showing his stumbling feet on camera. And yet, it was no biggie, because Harry was no champ dancer either. One more challenge Dan encountered on set happened when seven of Harry's friends drank the polyjuice potion to look like him. It looked exciting on the big screen, but it was a lot of work on the set, because Dan had to play all these people. One of them was Fleur de la Cour, and to play her, Radcliffe had to wear a bra. Look away. I'm idiots. Bra's not coming off. They do not again, ladies and gents. Yeah, Dan, bras can be challenging. And before we conclude, here's one more fact about Dan Radcliffe. He wanted to be Spider-Man, and not only because of his superpowers. All the cool stuff he can do, and secondly, he kisses Kirsten Dunst. Kirsten Dunst must have been flattered when she heard that. What's your favorite Harry Potter blooper? And do you know any more exciting behind-the-scenes secrets from the franchise? Share in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and stay awesome! Thanks for watching.